Hi, Dave Smith here. Uh, in this video, I thought what we would look at is large format monorail camera that I've got here. Now, I know what you're thinking. It doesn't look much like a camera, right? but let's have a closer look. This beauty is the Horseman LX 5x4. I'm pretty sure the LX is also available in 10x8 and it might even be available in 5x7 uh, and there's not much uh, difference what you would change would be if you wanted 10x8 you'd change the back standard and you'd change the bellows and uh, that would that would be it these standards are absolutely identical um, and we'll see that in a moment I'm going to take them off here to show you um, they're identical and you can get uh, another one that's called an intermediary standard that would sit between these if you wanted extra long bellows extension you'd have two here's the bellows you'd have two of these standard bellows right so you'd have one there another standard here another set of bellows and then you could get really long extensions for macro and I quite like macro photography so a large format macro photography pretty uh, pretty impressive okay so let's have a closer look let's look at these this is the monorail I've got the camera came with this 25 centimeter version now the lens I've got at the moment for this camera is the Fujinar 250 mil and you'll you've seen this before this is in that Chanel 5 shutter and it's not possible to get these standards um, far enough apart to focus that lens even at infinity all right that's a 250 mil thing um, but uh, by the time if I show you this by the time you've moved that standard to the end of the rail okay and that standard to the end here there isn't 250 mils between the lens and the film okay so that was not uh, much use so I bought a couple more uh, rails for this uh, for this system I've got this uh, 400 mil and this is whatever it is 560 mils uh, I, I believe I'm not quite sure how you would do it but I believe you can gang these together uh, but there's, uh, it's not obvious how you achieve that um, but I might look into that further if I really wanted to get into super long, uh, super long lengths. But I don't, uh, I don't anticipate that I will. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Now all this lot. If I just talk about the setup here, I've got a set of Manfrotto 075 legs. These are my favourite uh, tripod legs, but they are way too heavy for the field. They're incredibly heavy legs. Uh, I've got on top of those, I've got the leveling plate. I've got that Niwa quick release uh, system that we talked about before. This is the head that came with the, uh, the legs here. I previously had another set of these legs that I've had since I started photography uh, over, well over 30 years ago, because I'm an old man. Um, I don't really like this, uh, this head. Uh, I will be changing it, you can see how wobbly that is. I will be changing that for the 410 geared head, I should think. Uh, but that's what I'm set up with at the moment. Uh, okay, so that's the that's the setup. And if we let me turn this around to you. So the, the rail sits inside this block here. I can loosen that and I can fine tune uh, my focus. And if you've got uh, if you've been involved with macro photography, you'll know that uh, that's how you focus for macro work. You uh, set your lens, say, to one-to-one, -one, and then you, you physically move the whole camera system backwards and forwards to get your focus. If you do focus stacking in macro, you'll have um, a smaller um, sort of micrometer uh, gear uh, that would move your whole system backwards and forwards to to take over that, to take account of that razor thin uh, depth of field you get in macro. So this is a, this is a, a means of fine tuning your focus, uh, I would guess. Uh, 
for that kind of work. Now let's have a little look at the movements on these standards. First of all, if we, uh, no, if we loosen this one, then we've got geared rise and fall, and it's geared to uh, 30 centimeters, and I believe, yep, it's detented at 30, it's detented at zero there, and it's detented at minus 30 down there. So geared rise and fall on the front standard, and because these standards are in fact identical, we've got the same thing on uh, the rear standard. So if you need a lot of rise or fall, you could drop the rear standard, raise the front standard, and get the whole of a building uh, into your shot quite comfortably. Uh, so lots and lots of movement on there. If we loosen this one underneath here, then we have side to side shift, lateral shift. Okay, and that's also 30 centimeters and that's detented at 30 and it's detented at zero. One thing that I'm a bit unhappy about with this setup is that the uh, focus knob and, <coughs> excuse me, the lateral shift uh, uh, knob are very close to each other. They don't foul each other, but they are, it just makes it that little bit awkward. We've got a lever on the front of here, uh, which is a locking lever. If I unlock it, then I can swing the front standard and actually I can swing it and it's detented at 90 degrees, bizarrely. Because why would, why would you ever use it like that? Well, of course you wouldn't. Um, but it's detented at uh, zero and it's detented at 90 and you can lock it there. Now, one thing on here is on this front focusing knob here, this is, if I loosen that, you can see what I'm talking about. We'll go this way. So this is marked there at four by five and it's marked in F stops. Now I'm not quite sure uh, what that's about. Uh, I don't know how you would use that, but it's also marked for six by nine. More about that in a moment. Okay, so that's the that's the focusing there. I can. I've also got a similar uh, control on the back standard. Okay, but the back standard doesn't have that um, marking on there. I am going to have to do some research and find out what that's about, but quite frankly, f getting information on these cameras is not so easy. There's not that much information around, but I will have a look. If I do find out, I'll come back and let you know. Uh, we've got one more uh, control, and that's here, and that allows us to tilt the front standard. And again, I can tilt that as far as I like. That's detented to 90 as well. Though you'd, you'd never use it like that. Okay. Uh, the back standard has the same. So you've got all possible movements on the front and the back standard. So you've got rise and fall, lateral shift, swings, that's these ones, and tilts, that's these ones. So a lot of... Um, a lot of fine control available with a camera like this. Okay, now these standards are uh, based on the Sinar mounting system. So uh, the Sinar boards fit in here. The um, bellows is essentially a Sinar bellows. So if you buy, if you buy one of these cameras, uh, there's Uh, plenty of uh, accessories available for them uh, through the Sinar system, even if you can't find actual horseman uh, equipment. So we'll just fit the bellows in. like so. And then we can take our lens and we can uh, fit the lens on. And this is a Sinar board 
that this Chanel is mounted on, like so. And then if I turn this around, then uh, that all seems a bit skew whiff to me. We can put this back on. Now this is a Sinar type back and you can take this back off and you can replace it with uh, the, the Horseman roll film backs, for example. Uh, the Horseman roll film backs come in a, a wide range. You can do 6x4, 5, 6x6, 6x7, 6x9, 6x12. I quite like the idea of a 6x12 because uh, I like um, uh, panoramas. And you can see that the ground glass screen here, uh, which does sound like glass, is marked up. There's grids here. I'm not sure how well you'll see that, but there are grids for six by nine and also six by seven in there. Okay, that's a horseman type, uh, sorry, a Sinar type uh, fitting. So you can also put Sinar backs on that. And then the uh, monorail has these end plates. Uh, which just prevent you from inadvertently winding your standards right off the gear, uh, which I'm thinking wouldn't be a good idea. You can see how unstable this, um, this head is. Uh, it does need replacing, uh, but that's something I will get to in the near future. So we just put these stops back on. There's our camera uh, all nicely set up. Now, uh, it, these uh, these standards, as I said, you can get an intermediary standard, but you can also get, I'm not sure how common they are, but you can also get what are called your free standards uh, that fit this system as well. Now, I won't say too much more about your free right now. We'll get into uh, all those movements uh, in subsequent videos. Uh, these are not uh, the your free type, um, but we'll find out more about that. Uh, a little later. Okay, so that's the Horseman 5x4 LX. Takes standard plug-in uh, film holders. These are old uh, Fidelities, I think. Uh, now I, I have about, uh, I think, 10 of these. So I can load those up before I go out for the day and I've got 20 shots. Now, if you're a digital user, 20 shots might not sound like very much. And even in the old film days, uh, you know, if you were shooting on 35 millimeter film, you'd get rolls of 36 and you'd change them pretty easily. So 20 shots doesn't sound like much, but let me tell you, in uh, large format, uh, 20 shots is a lot. Uh, but I do also have a changing bag here that I can take out with me. It's a nice large one and I can change film in the field should I so wish. This, oh, that's horrible, isn't it? Yeah, I'm going to take this camera off that head. I'm going to dispense with that head pretty swiftly. I think it's not, uh, uh, I just don't think it's up to the job. Uh, and we'll get a, a new head for this uh, for this setup, I think. Anyway, there's the Horseman LX 5x4 with the Fujin R 250mm lens. Not a lot of information about these cameras. <coughs> there are um, there are a few available. <coughs> Excuse me. There are a few available if you're interested in getting your own monorail. They're not that expensive. Um, the, the real problem I find with buying all kinds of uh, cameras, if you use eBay for example, is the vast majority uh, are coming from Japan. And as soon as you buy anything from Japan, you pay exorbitant import fees. And that's not just to do with uh, duties and tax, that's also the handling fees of the likes of DHL and uh, FedEx and all those people. Uh, they're out of control, quite frankly, um, but they are exorbitant. So if you're going to buy one of these and you're in the UK or you're in Europe, try to find one that's in the UK or it's in Europe. Save yourself uh, what can be maybe 30% uh, on top of your purchase price. It's, it's outrageous. Anyway, I hope that's of some interest. 
Um, I will say much more about this uh, when, I, when we go out into the field with this camera. That's the point at which I will show you what the effect of all those movements has on the image that you see on the ground glass. This is just a, a quick rundown through what movements are available on these, uh, these old monorail cameras. Sinar are still making these monorail cameras, of course, so you can still buy them brand new. But my word, you'd need deep pockets for that. <laughs> okay, so I hope that's of some interest. Bye for now. Mm-mm. <clears throat>